All right, guys, got some first semester geometry final review videos for you. We're going to cover these four topics up here. Uh, there's timestamps in the video player down below. You can drag the bar to whichever part you need. One of these four. If you don't see what you're looking for, maybe go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'll be happy to make a video for you. Or you can check out this playlist up here that has more of these topics. This right now is just unit one. But without further ado, let's get into it. Hey guys, one quick thing before we get into this first one here is if you're one of my students, this is straight off your final review packet, all right? So for example, this is number six. I'll try to keep them numbered over in the corner for you so you know which one we're going with as we do these. Uh, but otherwise, if you're not my student or uh, if you're just trying to study in general, one good practice is to maybe get the problem written down, pause the video, all right, and then try it yourself then hit play again, see if I do it the same way you do it, and then you can see whether or not those match up to see if you did that correct or not. Otherwise, let's get into this first one up here, which says point C38 is the midpoint of AB. One endpoint is A, negative one five, find the coordinates of the other endpoint B. All right, so this is telling us that we have a line segment AB, A on one side and B on the other with our midpoint C, where those two are the same, and so C is going to be in the middle. And it gives us the coordinates of each of those points, all right? For, so for example, C is 3, 8. I'll put that down here. It's 3, 8, an ordered pair. And then A is negative 1, 5, all right? If we need to find the coordinates of our other endpoint B, in order to do this one, what we need to look at is our X values first and then our Y values, all right? Our X values go from negative 1 to 3, starting at negative 1 on the left and then 3 in the middle. And I, if you notice here, I went up 4. Right, negative one plus three gets me, or plus four gets me to three. So if I go up four more, that's gonna put me at seven over here for the X value of B. If I do the same thing with the Y values, five plus three is eight. So eight plus three more will get me to 11. And then my endpoint for B is seven, 11. Okay, next question number eight says XZ bisects uh, angle WXY. You notice XZ here is a ray because there's only one arrow above the X and the Z. And so because of that, it looks like if this is WXY and it's being bisected, bisected means it's cut exactly in half or this angle is going to be congruent to this angle. All right, so if that's true, what we can do to solve this situation is set 60 the top one equal, since they're congruent, equal to our bottom one, 3x minus 12, and go ahead and solve for x like this. I'll do it real quick for you. So if I solve that real quick, I get x equals 24, which satisfies x in this problem. All right, guys, this next one's a little bit tough. At first glance, it looks like it's just gonna be vertical angles, set those equal to each other, boom, solve it, you're done. But you'll notice across from each other, my vertical angles are different variables. That's bad, okay? Here I have 11x, and here I have 5y. I cannot set those equal to each other because, um, well, we just, we just don't know how to do that yet, okay? So what I have to do instead is realize that this is talking about degrees, okay? I know it doesn't quite explicitly say it on your review packet, but that is what it's talking about. So, for example, if I look at the y values and the x values here, let me start with the x's since that's alphabetical order, it goes first. Um, this is what I'm gonna do is take 11x plus 16 and add it to the other one, 8x plus 12. And then since this is a linear pair, I'm gonna put it equal to 180 since they're along the same line. A linear pair adds up to be 180 degrees, okay? Then I can go ahead and solve for x, which I'll do real quick for you. All right, so for the x value, I get x equals eight. And then for the y value, same idea. We're gonna add these up and set them equal to 180 like this. Three y plus 13 plus five y minus one equals 180. Again, I'll solve this real quick for you. And in this case, y equals 21. All right, guys, last topic for this video is we have to decide if these statements are always, sometimes, or never true. Talking about supplementary, vertical, complementary, uh, those different types of angles. So let's look at what we have here. This first one says, if two angles are supplementary, then they're a linear pair. Well, yes, that's one of the definitions of supplementary. It has to be a linear pair and adjacent angles. So this would be always, that is always true. Second one, if two angles are a linear pair, then they are supplementary. Yes, again, linear pair, um, again, part of the definition of a linear pair is that they are supplementary, so that would be always. Okay, next one. If two angles are vertical angles, then they're supplementary. Sometimes, okay? If you have two vertical angles, 
like here, one and two are vertical angles. If those two add up to be 180 degrees, which is the definition of supplementary, that would be true. But of course, that doesn't have to be true. So this is only sometimes true. Next one, if two angles are adjacent, then they are complementary. Well, again, adjacent just means next to each other. And that could happen if we have, again, maybe a right angle and I divide into two. Well, these two next to each other, angles one and two, they are definitely adjacent. They're next to each other and they're definitely right. But I can make two other angles that are adjacent that are not complementary. So again, this is just sometimes true. All right, last one. If two angles are supplementary, then they're both acute. Well, acute means that they're less than 90 degrees. And if we have two, we can take it as close as, we, as we're going to get here. So let's say maybe 89 and 89. Okay. Well, if I have both of those that are the largest acute angles that I can get, well, I need 90 and 90 to get supplementary at least, right? So at least one of my angles has to be um, right or obtuse, uh, which means they both cannot be acute and yet still be supplementary. So there's no way for that to happen. So this would be never true. Hey guys, did this video on our final review help you out? If it did, help me out by liking this video down below. Otherwise, check out this video. I think it's also gonna help you as you study for your geometry final.